recording on the cloud. Om Gyan Timirandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chakshurun Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prishtaya Bhutale Shri Mate Bhakti Vedanta Swami Itinamine Namaste Saraswati Devi Gauravani Pracharine Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Pashchatya Deshatarine Mancha Kalpataru Vesha Kripa Sindhu Pevacha Patitana Pavanebio Vaishnavipio Namonamaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhara Shri Vasani Gaura Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna so, Sorry to be a little late I think the translation purport have not yet been read isn't it So So we are we are reading now 621, 23, and 24. 20. So, my, my dear king, this is Shukadeva Goswami speaking to Parishat Maharaj. While he thus spent his time in abominable sinful activities to maintain his family of many sons, 80, 88 years of his life passed by. So then we have 6124. Tasya pravayasaha putra dashate sham to yo avamaha balo narayano namna pitros jadaito brisham Tasya of him ajamil pravayasaha who was very old putraha sons dasha ten te sham of all of them two but yaha the one who, Avamaha, the youngest, Balaha, child, Narayanaha, Narayan, Namna, by name, Pitroho, of the father and mother, Cha, and Daitaha, dear, Brusham, very. Translation purport by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Shri Prabhupada. Translation, that old man Ajamil had ten sons, of whom the youngest was a baby named Narayan. Since Narayan was the youngest of all the sons, he was naturally very dear to both his father and his mother. Purport, the word Pravayasaha indicates Ajamil's sinfulness because although he was 88 years old, he, were, he had a very young child. According to Vedic culture, one should leave home as soon as he has reached 50 years of age. One should not live at home and go on producing children. Sex life is allowed for 25 years, between the ages of 25 and 45, or at the most 50. After that, one should give up the habit of sex life and leave home as a vana prastha, and then properly take sannyas. Ajamil, however, because of his association with the prostitute, lost all Brahminical culture and became most sinful, even in his so-called household life. So, this is one of the more sobering pastimes in the Srimad Bhagavatam. And if we look at the overall structure of the Bhagavatam, the Ajamil pastime comes at a very significant transition point. In general, in the material world, there are two things which need to be considered. The Ishopanishad says that vidyam cha vidyam cha yastad vedo bhayam sa avidyaya mrityum tirtva vidyaya mrita mashnute So, now literally it is the Upanishads often like to speak in paradoxical ways that many times what happens is that the same that the same word can have multiple meanings. So it's it's almost literally, if you take this verse, what it means is that knowledge and ignorance are both required. Vidyam cha vidyam cha yastadvedo bhayam sa. By that one can become free from fearlessness. 
Now we may say, why would anyone require ignorance? So actually, it does not it does not refer literally to ignorance. What it refer what it means is knowledge about the world which is filled with ignorance, and knowledge about the world which is filled with knowledge or which, in which we are enlightened. So it is in one sense you can say material knowledge and spiritual knowledge. So vidya and avidya have specific meanings in that context. So, so the the words are often multivalent. Multivalent means the same word can have different meanings. In English, there is the word run or running, which is said to have the maximum meanings. It has around uh, 580 meanings. So I am running to improve my health. You know, who is running for the president? Why is my, my car not running? I am running because my car is not running. So we could have multiple meanings of the same word. And we understand from context what the meaning is. So similarly, Vidyamcha Vidyamcha, what is it referring to? It refers to the fact that Avidya Mrityum Tirtva, that by the knowledge of Avidya, it's not so much knowledge of ignorance doesn't seem to make much sense because knowledge and ignorance are opposite things. So what do you knowledge of ignorance? So Avidya is referred non-literally to the place of ignorance by knowledge of how this place of ignorance works. That is by knowledge of the material world, one can actually go beyond it. Avidya mrityum tirtva. One can go beyond mortality or deathlessness. And avidyaya, am, vidyaya amrita By gaining knowledge of the world of knowledge, by, of the Satchitana spiritual world, one can attain immortal life. So interestingly, what this verse says is that simply by one part is simply by studying the nature of the material world, one can get detachment from it. And as we can get detached, we can go beyond the domain of death. So we may go only till Brahman, we may not really attain eternal ecstatic life which comes by bhakti. For that, we need positive knowledge of the spiritual world also. So overall, the idea is overall the idea is that each one of us needs to uh, gain both these knowledges, knowledge of Vidya and Avidya. So in this particular verse, both these knowledge is being offered in one sense. How is that? We are being offered knowledge about the dangers of material existence through the story of Ajamil and how a respectable Brahmana succumbed, how a respectable Brahmana slipped. And that is a, quite a sobering story. So that is the nature of the material world. So the danger of the material world is not just Janma Mrityu Jaravyadi. That, that's of course the distresses of the material world. But the danger of the material world, apart from that is also that one may be on the path of elevation, that is living a Brahminical or a virtuous or a devotional life, and still one may slip and fall. So that danger is illustrated in this. So avidya, and this can make us cautious. We have to be careful over here. And just like if we know that in a particular area, the road is risky. Sometimes on the road, there is a sign that comes, a sharp turn ahead, slow down. So then we know, okay, I have to slow down. So this is like a cautionary note for us in this pastime. At the same time, the pastime also talks about the power of devotion. Power of devotion in elevating a person who may have fallen. And specifically the pastime is about the holy name. So avidya mrityum tvirtva. Oh, this world is filled with such temptations that anybody can fall. So I have to be careful. And then vidyaya amruta mashnute. Then we understand the glory of bhakti, the glory of Krishna's merciful nature. And that... Hare anything. Krishna Prabhu. Yeah? Uh, sorry, Prabhu. Prabhu, are you sharing any PPT because we don't see anything on the screen? You're not able to see me also? We are able to see you, but then we don't see any uh, your PPT. 
So just wanted to check if you are sharing anything yeah. or there is no any PPT today. I, I'll, I'll share later. Right now, I'm not started. Okay, okay. Thank you, Prabhu. Yeah, sure. So these two things, Vidya and Avidya, are both important. And now, in this particular verse, so that's the overall context of this pastime to illustrate both the dangerousness of the material world and the mercifulness of the Lord. So that is Shokmishad verse. By both these, we can move forward. You know, sometimes we, mean, we say we should take spiritual life seriously. That means we take Maya seriously and we take Krishna seriously. It's like if somebody has somebody is in a hospital, you know, take your hospital stay seriously. That means what? Okay, take your disease seriously. It's no laughing matter. You can't just neglect it. Recognize how dangerous the disease can be and then take your treatment seriously. So just taking the disease seriously is not enough because that can fill a person with pessimism. Oh, I've got cancer. And so many people die of cancer. So many cancers are incurable. Well, many cancers may be incurable, but your cancer is not incurable. Take the treatment seriously. You can be cured. So the idea over here is that it is important for each one of us to take both these aspects seriously. And what happens is, now we may say, isn't it enough only to take Krishna seriously? Well, yes, it is true. But very few people can sustain seriousness in Krishna Bhakti without, with, unless they have taste. So Jiva Goswami says that, that actually if we have love, if we have preeti for Krishna, we have love for Krishna, then remembering him, focusing on him, centering on him is very easy. But if you don't have that, then what we need is buddhi. Without buddhi, without intelligence, it's very difficult to sustain our commitment to the practice of Krishna Bhakti or sustain at least at a steady level. And that's why the reminders are important. So, so I will today focus on this journey from lower taste to higher taste. Mm -hmm. That is embodied in the story of Ajamil. And Srila Prabhupada uh, in this verse takes the opportunity to explain how Ajamil was caught in the lower taste. He had, he had succumbed to it when he was a Brahmana and since that time he had continued to be in that grip. So let's look at a well-known section from the Bhagavatam, sorry, from the Bhagavad Gita which talks about this journey from Lower taste to higher taste. And we will see what it can tell us for our understanding and growth in this journey. So this is the well-known section in the Bhagavad Gita. That is, in 2.54, Arjuna is asking a question and Krishna answers that question. So what happens over here is uh, uh, Krishna is asked two Krishna is asked four questions by Arjuna. The pragyasya kabasha samadhi sasya keshava sthitadhi kim prabhasheta kim asita rajeta kim. So here kabhasha is answered in fifty five. Kim prabhasheta is answered in fifty six fifty seven. Kim asita rajeta kim. So how to be situated in the material world? How to function in the material world? These two questions are answered in say 58 to 72. So 58 to, depending on which Acharya's commentary we take, it is 61 or 63 is the answer to the first question. So let's focus on 58 to 61. How to function in the material world? How to be situated in the material world? So, yet the, so this is a well-known verse in terms of at least its metaphor. Yada samharate chayam. Kurmo angani vasarvasha indriyan indriyar thebyas asya pragyam pratishtita. Krishna is saying just that the tortoise withdraws its limbs. Similarly, we need to withdraw our limbs from the, uh, our senses from the sense objects. Indriyan indriyar thebyas. So it's in many times in the Bhagavad Gita, the word indriya artha is used. So the word artha is also an example of multivalent words in Sanskrit. Artha can mean meaning, Artha can mean finance, Artha mantri. Artha can also mean object. 
when we do something it can mean purpose the purpose of the senses is to come in contact with sense objects so indriya indriya arte bhyas so we need to restrain or regulate the contact of the senses with the sense objects so and this the social system for that was varanashram and prabhupad talks about varanashram in this purport where he says that this withdrawal of the senses from the sense objects is naturally done when one moves from the grahastha ashram to the vanaprastha ashram and there after the sanyasa ashram there are there are principles and there are specifics so specifics may vary shri so prabhupad himself did not take to sanyas literally at all that 50th birthday or i have to leave i have to take vanaprastha sanyas it is not like that but the, it is a broad map of life and the idea is whether one is in a particular ashram or some other ashram the ashram is a support system for one to to function properly to function spiritually function responsibly so indriya indriya arthe bhya so regulate the contact between the senses and the sense objects so this is one thing that it is impossible for us to to actually gain self control or to turn towards spirituality unless we restrain uh, unless we minimize the contact of the senses with the sense objects it's it's a, it's a if it may seem like a external activity but it's an important external activity like some people say that i have no will power you know i just can't control myself Like so suppose somebody is an alcoholic, and they are just not able to give up alcohol. You say, you know, I just can't give it up. And it is possible. We may, we may say that oh, you just you are just not strong enough. You just don't have you you are just not determined enough. You just don't have enough willpower. Well, it may not be that simple. Now, what applies to alcoholism can apply to many other attachments also. Mm-hmm. That sometimes the urges may be so strong. that we may just not be able to give up the urges when the urges come we just be overwhelmed at that time so at that time simply beating oneself up oh why did i do that i should not have done that so the alcoholic may say that when the the urge comes so strong upon me that i just can't do anything about it okay that may be so but suppose somebody is earnest about recovering from alcohol then at the very least they what they can do is don't take a house on top of a bar don't take a house right next to a bar that is something which we can choose we may not be able to choose how strong the urge is when it comes and whether we can restrain it or not but these are long term decisions we don't have to take a house right next to a bar so when krishna says here that resistance the senses from the sense objects like a tortoise withdraws its limbs that means each of us can try to arrange our life in such a way that our exposure to sense objects is minimized now we cannot eliminate it but we can minimize it a tortoise does not live with its limbs withdrawn 24 hours a day the limbs are not meant only to be withdrawn the limbs are required for the functioning of the tortoise but wherever there is danger the tortoise withdraws its limbs so now the world will not create the facility for us so much that oh the sense objects will disappear we will have to create that facility what does that mean that each one of us will have to create a safe zone for ourselves so it could be it could range for something as simple as say if we tend to spend a lot of time on the internet surfing this watching this doing that then maybe have some some kind of application or some kind of device we just maybe the next one hour i'm going to study bhagavatam just lock off the internet not log off the internet but lock off the internet that even if i i log off from it but i can't even log on if i want to so that is a practical way in which we can do this for the next one hours my senses are going to be drawn from the sense objects the sense objects in this case the internet and all the sense objects that are available over there 
So say if we want to regulate, we want to say vacho vegam, manasa krodha vegam. We want to jiva vegam. We want to regulate the regulate the eating. Then maybe if there is tempting food in the house, you know, keep it under a lock and don't keep the lock uh, key nearby closed. There are you know many of you have seen that there are there are like boxes, cookie jars with inbuilt locks, and you just can't open it. You can break it, but you can't open it. So this may seem funny, but the idea is that actually each one of us will have to find out in our situation how we can withdraw our senses from the particular sense objects that that tempt us. So creating that safe zone, that safe distance, will we how we will do that will vary. So the traditional system was through the varnashram. Now. Varnashram itself may or may not be replicable for us in our particular situation. But the idea is we have to create that safe zone. So once we create that safe zone, what happens? The constant fueling of our lower desires, the constant fueling of the lower urges, that decreases. It, I'm using carefully the words over here. The lower urges themselves are not going to disappear by this, by this creation of the safe zone. But the fueling of the lower urges, the, if there's a fire, calm, anala, Krishna says in the later that calm is like, uh, is like fire. That fire is not going to be extinguished by this, but at least the further fuel is not being put on the fire. So that's how this first verse is create, about creating a safe zone for ourselves. Now the next verse is Krishna says the Krishna talks about the uh, the limitation of this approach. He says now safe zone it is it is not unimportant. So you could put it this way that this safe zone theme the best way to deal with temptation is to not deal with temptation. The best way to deal with temptation is to not deal with temptation. So temptation is like very, very, very sneaky, very seductive. It's like some, some marketers are there, maybe telemarketers, they phone. And they are so persuasive that if you pick up the phone, by the time the conversation is over, we will have bought what they want, what it sell us. Although we have no need for it, we have no interest in it, we have no desire for it, but they will, they will convince us. So we could say Maya is like that kind of telemarketer. If you pick up the call, we will end up buying. So the first is don't pick up the call. Create that safe zone. Hmm? But the problem with that is, it is not, in this particular case, it is not just because the telemarketer is phoning that we are buying it. We also have some desire inside it. It's not just sense objects that create desire. You could say sense objects activate desire within us. And now that is the problem which Krishna talks about over here. So to deal with, uh, to move, so the first journey, the first step in the journey from lower taste to higher taste is, is regulation, creation of safe zones where we are not fueling the lower taste. And next is, Vishaya vini vartante nirahara dehina rasavarjam rasopyasya param drishtvani vartate. So Vishaya vini vartante, when we regulate our senses or when we abstain from indulging in the sense objects. What happens, Krishna says is, Dehinaha, the embodied soul feels as if niraharasya, ahar is food. Niraharasya is, I am without food. I am starving. So now we may say literally that person is not starving, you're not, you're not fasting. But that's how it feels. So for each of the senses, so if our eyes are habituated to watching certain things, if our ears are habituated to hearing certain music, some kind of, maybe it could be mundane movie music or whatever. And if we stop it, we feel as if we are starving. Because the senses, each of the senses seeks its ahar, its food from outside. And this food, we are not referring to just the food that nourishes our body. This is also the food that agitates our mind. Like some food, we eat food, normally we eat food to nourish our body. But nowadays there is so much junk food available. 
and that food doesn't nourish our body it may titillate our tongue but it actually harms our body but we eat it because we are so attached we are so attracted to it it's sometimes marketed so attractively so so when we stop eating that food we may be eating nutritious food but still there is there is a feeling oh i want to eat this fast food i want to eat that i want to eat that so what happens is we call it fast food but but it's a very selective and deceptive name it may be fast in the sense of being fast available fast to cook but it is slow to digest it is slow to deal with after a long time it's so but we may still feel hungry although we are eating healthy food but there is the appetite of the belly and there is the appetite of the tongue so tongue tongue may still feel hungry because it's craving niraharasya dehina rasavarjam rasopyasya krishna says rasavarjam one gives up the rasa which rasa the lower taste rasavarjam rasopyasya but still that taste that craving that memory of that uh, indulgence that pleasure remains and this is the torment so that, that's why this is the like regulation is the beginning step it is not the final step it is like if you want to extinguish fire the first thing we need to do is stop fueling the fire if you don't stop fueling the fire you like say some firefighters have come somewhere and there's a big building and the big building is burning and nearby there's another building and that may also start burning so the first thing the firefighters have to do okay let's prevent the fire from spreading over there or the fire is getting fuel from this particular area let's cut it off over there but stopping the fuel is not extinguishing the fire however if we don't stop the fuel then no matter how much water we pour on one side we are extinguishing the fire on one side we are again giving give, we are letting fuel come so that will get further aggravated so that creating that safe zone now we may not be able to have that safe zone 24 hours a day for 365 days a year for the rest of our life but at least for some time we need the safe zone and that's how for that time the fire is not being fueled but even after the fire is not being fueled the the fire is still there and the fire will keep burning so this is a fire which burns inside us and this fire is the difference between the fire of worldly desires and a physical fire is very significant normally if something makes us so we go if there is a fire if there is a fire outside then what happens is as soon as we feel the fire we move away from it whenever we feel fire we move away from the from the source of that fire that's with physical fire but with respect to the fire of desire inside us the effect is opposite opposite whenever we feel the desire we move closer to this object so the object of desire whenever we feel the fire of desire inside us we are pulled closer and closer to it so rasavarjam rasopyasya that although we may decide no i am not going to indulge in it but we are dragged towards it then what is the solution krishna says param drushtva nivartate that if we get the higher taste then we can nivartate so it's a See the first line. This was nivartante and nivartate. It's the similar words. Vishaya vinivartante. Vinivartante here means restraint or abstinence. Nivartate means steadily situated. So one may give up external objects, but one will become externally. One will become situated in the giving up of those objects when we get param drishtva. Now this leads us to a. to a catch 22 situation catch 22 is a phrase which means you know there is no way out there are two two there are two things which mutually reinforce each other and trap us so how does this begin somebody may say that okay that okay we cannot give up lower taste unless we gain higher taste so that that's what krishna is saying we cannot but somebody else may say that or one one perspective is we cannot give up lower taste till we get higher taste the other perspective is that we cannot get higher taste unless we give up lower taste so where what do we do then 
So how do we move for this journey from lower taste to higher taste? So it, it and both we can quote scripture for both of these things. Uh, we cannot get uh, give uh, we cannot give up lower taste unless we get higher taste. Prabhupada would give example of how a child, uh, how a child is playing with a toy, and a um, child may be playing with a dangerous thing like a knife, and you just pull it away, the child will start crying. You have to give the child some better toy to play with, and then that child will give up the give up the. Uh, that knife or something like that. So he says that we just cannot live without pleasure. So he says we cannot give up lower taste unless we get higher taste. That's one statement. And uh, overall, this verse is also saying the same thing. But there are other statements also. That Matirna Krishna Paratah Satova Mitho Vipatye Tagraha Pratanam Adant Gobir Vichitam Tamasham Apuna Punash Charvita Charvinanam. And Prahlad Maharaj's teaching says that. that that actually if somebody matirna krishne paratha swatova that by others instructions by one's own endeavors even by cooperative effort one will not develop attraction to krishna if one is attached to worldly pleasure adanta gobir vishatam tamishram so puna punas charita charunana one will actually go to hellish condition of life if one keeps puna punas charita charunana again indulging again and again indulging in sense pleasure so this kind of verses seem to say that we cannot get higher taste unless we give up lower taste. So that is, in one sense, the trap for all of us. Where do we begin? That how do I start moving from lower taste towards higher taste? And we could say the key over here lies in this word drushtva, param drushtva. Now, usually this param drishtva is translated as higher taste. And that is perfect in the sense that when we get that higher taste, then we become steady. Now, literally, drishtva is a variant of the word drishti. Drishti means vision. So, srishti is creation and drishti is vision. So, drishti means what? So if we take the literal param drishtra, when we get the higher vision, when we get the higher understanding, we become steady. So what does this mean over here? That it is not necessary that we have to get the higher taste to give up the lower taste. We have to get a higher vision, a higher understanding, a higher purpose hmm? in pursuit of the higher taste. And that itself can be enough for us. So the what do what do I mean by this? I suppose, I suppose now uh, say nowadays there is so much uh, food that is uh, fatty available around us. That's it. It's it it's it's easy for anyone to gain weight, and it actually requires constant effort to stay fit and slim. So suppose the recent the COVID pandemic is more or less getting over. So there are sociologists who are recognizing now that there were two COVID pandemics. I'm not talking about two different waves over here. The first was the COVID pandemic, COVID-19 pandemic that was caused by the coronavirus. And the second COVID-19 was the 19 pounds that people gained because of inactivity, because of enforced inactivity. So a lot of people ended up gaining weight. So now what happens is that suppose somebody wants to lose weight. Now we may say, oh, but you know, I'll have to give up food. I'll have to regulate my diet. I'll have to do exercise. That's so difficult. How will I do it? But suppose they meet somebody else and that person has lost a lot of weight. Now there are of course some disruptive ways of losing weight where people just uh, abuse their bodies. But that is not healthy. But suppose somebody is following a good regimen of diet and uh, exercise and they've lost some weight. And we see that, oh, okay, how did you do this? Okay, you did this. Okay, you know, yeah, maybe that is doable for me. So we just get that higher path, a path to a higher goal, a higher purpose. See, we human beings are made in such a way that we get stimulation. We get stimulation is we could say one level of satisfaction. We get 
Am I audible to everyone clearly? Because your image is freezing. Prabhuji. Okay. Prabhuji. Okay. So we human beings are made in such a way that we get stimulation not just by achieving a goal. We get stimulation even by having a goal to achieve. Not just by achieving a goal, but even by having a goal to achieve. We feel stimulated. Oh, this is what I'm going to do. So what happens is, param. Uh, so if somebody gets okay now, okay in, in one month I can lose this much weight and I can lose this much weight. I can lose this much weight. But in six months I can be where I want to be. That itself stimulates. Okay, now I can move forward. So param drishtva doesn't necessarily mean have to be higher taste. It can also be the purpose of pursuing higher taste. If we and not just the purpose. Oh, I want to gain higher taste. It's a purpose with a path. This purpose alone is not enough. Oh, purpose everybody may have. I want to lose weight, but that itself may not inspire them. Okay, this is I want to lose weight, and this is the way I can do it. You know, okay, okay I cannot avoid all food that is enjoyable, but maybe this food I can avoid. With this food I can regulate. This much exercise I can do. So when there is a higher purpose with a path, that itself can stimulate us. But when will it stimulate us? when we remember it okay you know why am i not eating all this tempting food because because i want to become healthier i want to be less vulnerable to the, the, all the diseases that may come because of obesity and all the problems that might come i want to avoid them so that is why i started by talking about buddhi jiva goswami says that we can remember krishna naturally when we have priti when we have affection for krishna but if we don't have that affection for krishna then what we need is buddhi it is buddhi that will keep us on our spiritual platform it is our intelligence so this higher taste right now is not an experience is the, for us as sadhakas the higher taste may not be a experience right sometimes yes when we do kirtans we feel experience some higher taste sometimes when we when we are trying to practice bhakti uh sometimes our japa also may feel very good very we may feel a lot of strength and connection from our japa but it may not be all the time so at other times we feel japa is like it's such a it's such a we may not want to admit it but it's just like a burden it's we may feel oh i just want to get it over with and sometimes we have our bead bag and we see we take the beads out of the bag Because we're looking how how many how many are remaining how many beads are remaining for this round? We say oh so many. Does this bead have a hundred and eight bead? Does this mala have hundred and eight beads, or does it have a thousand eight beads? It's just not ending. So we feel like that sometimes. So right now the higher taste may not be an experience for us, but the high just if we have a higher purpose with a path to that purpose. that can be stimulated and that can also act as a substitute for the higher taste because if we are stimulated for a particular goal if we are motivated if we are inspired for a particular goal in the pursuit of that goal itself we get some taste it is not the same taste as the achievement of the goal but that there is a taste and that is what inspires us to transform so param drishtva so drishtva means vision so what is higher vision here refer to the vision of tr- self transformation what motivates a person okay i want to lose weight i want to become healthier that higher vision yes i can be healthier this is the th- that is where i want to go and this is the path to go there so drishtva the, there is higher taste and there is the vision to the higher taste which is like a higher vision so for us some of us may be fortunate enough to have already developed taste for some limbs of bhakti we may have developed taste for kirtan for bhajan for deity worship for particular services and that's fortunate if we have developed the taste however if that taste is not steady or if that taste is not yet developed then it is our responsibility to maintain the higher vision the higher vision is okay this is where i want to go and this is the path i which by which i can go and that will help us steadily move forward 
and that's why shri prabhupad wanted regular bhagavatam classes not just regular but daily and daily hearing of philosophy daily hearing krishna katha at one level krishna katha is purifying and sometimes krishna katha can be very entertaining and satisfying also at but another level the daily hearing of krishna katha is maintained is help is going to help us in this param drishtva nivartate how do we stay fixed in that higher taste by being fixed in the higher vision and that higher vision is maintained by nourishing our buddhi so i'll conclude with this point this nirahara that we are feeling you know feeling we are feeling that my senses are starving and not just my senses are starving and the senses are starving we feel we are starving we feel we are starving nowadays there is this uh, then uh, there's a lot of detox the idea of detox and fasting or abstaining is becoming popular so like we may want to detox our body i think i take a lot of unhealthy foods all of that i want to stop that but there is also something called digital detox digital detox is you know maybe once a day i will i will fast i will avoid taking in i'll avoid going on social media i'll avoid going on this i'll avoid going on that not maybe for one hour a day or one day a week or something like that so when we do that we may feel as if we are starving but this niraharasya dehina that feeling that i am starving that can be avoided if we are nourishing our intelligence we we will have to st- when we will feel as if our senses are being starved when we regulate ourselves but that that starvation can be mitigated if we are nourishing our intelligence that nourishing our intelligence will will give us some fulfillment and then the starvation of the senses won't trouble us that much and this is the journey by which we can move from the lower taste gradually but steadily and surely toward the higher taste so i'll summarize broadly i spoke on three main topics today the to- overall topic was how to gain higher taste when we don't have higher taste or how so first i talked about this past time itself is illustrating vidyam cha vidyam cha the dangerousness of material existence in terms of its capacity to pull down even well situated people through temptation and the glory of krishna's mercifulness as manifested through his holy name and then second point i discuss is that how to to stop succumbing to the lower taste the first thing is we have to stop fueling the fire of desire and that means creating safe zones so varanashram was a traditional social arrangement for creating safe zones and that may not be possible then we have to create our individual arrangements whether it be turn off the internet not just log 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 off but lock off the internet so i like that create safe zones that will at least it not extinguish the fire but it will stop making the fire worse and the next stage is that after that we need to redirect ourselves because the taste because the taste the craving the desire still remains it's not just externally it is not externally caused it is only externally triggered externally activated so what do we do internal we move to higher taste and that is the third point that if we don't have higher taste then what do we do we at least have the higher vision the higher vision is the path to the higher taste we humans are made in such a way that we get stimulated not just by achieving something good but even by being motivated even by pursuing something good so for that maintaining that higher vision param drushtva can mean higher taste or it can mean the higher vision of the path to the higher taste so for that we need buddhi we need to regularly nourish our intelligence by studying studying krishna's message studying krishna katha and then we will persist till we actually make the journey from the lower taste to the higher taste thank you very much hare krishna are there any questions thank you, or comments sir. thank you so much prabhu for the wonderful session with all the points of how we can get higher taste and if we don't have a taste how we have have higher vision to get to that taste and 
uh, on this. Thank you, Prabhu Hare Krishna. Uh, devotees, if you have any questions, please uh, can go ahead. Or I don't see any raised hands. I see something in the chat. Prabhu Ji, Dandvat Pranam. Thank you very much for the excellent class. And uh, as I understand from your lecture, the root cause is my material desire. And I understand that we are misusing our free will, what Krishna has given us. And, you know, that's the cause of that. But I wonder, like Nitya Siddha and we are Nitya Baddha. So what, what in, you know, want to go to the root where, you know, I, I, this is my desire. So is there any, any, any explanation anywhere? Is that this is the root by... I understand there's a Ichha Dvesa but why did I de develop dwesh? That's what I don't understand. So if you can help me. Thank you. Yes, Prabhu. The question of origins is a vexed question. There are different acharyas who have given different understandings of it. And it is whichever understanding we find satisfactory, we can take it. And it may be that uh, this some questions may be such that we may not be able to get a satisfactory answer entirely. So, the, so Jiva Goswami says that the soul was the soul never falls from the spiritual world. The soul is always in this material world. So he says that then isn't that discriminatory? Why should soul some souls always be nitya? But the as you said, some souls be nitya. He says now if we want to look at that discriminatory. Then why is then you could go ahead and say discrimination is inherent to Gaudiya Vaishnavism? Because why is Radharani alone dear to Krishna, dearest to Krishna? Why don't other gopis have as much motive, intimacy with Krishna as Radharani? Or why don't devotees in other rasas have as much intimacy with Krishna as those who are uh, in the Madhuras? Why do devotees of other forms of Vishnu not have access to Krishna? They have access only to those other forms of Vishnu. Well, yes, and, you know, if we start raising questions about that, then there are, there are, we could question the entire existence, the nature of the spiritual world itself. So that's his explanation. The second is Bhaktivinu Thakur, who more or less seems to say that we were in Brahma Jyoti. And that, now I'm giving, this is a very complex subject and I'm giving a very bare bones overview because this is not the subject, this is not a subject of our class. Hmm? Bhaktivinu Thakur seems to say that, that we were in the Brahma Jyoti and from there we fell. Mm -hmm. And his understanding is that Brahma Jyoti is a place where there can be peace but not joy. And sometimes we may just get tired of peace. And we want something more. And then we descend to this world. And Bhagavad Prabhupada seems to say that we, we were with Krishna. Not just in Brahma Jyoti but in the spiritual world. And we came from Krishna. Now Prabhupada also is not, that is not the only position he has taken. There are places where Prabhupada says, for example, in the, the fall of, in the Kumaras cursing, the Jay and Vijay, that pastime, he says, therefore the conclusion is no one ever falls from the spiritual world. The categorical conclusion Prabhupada says is, is. So Prabhupada has taken multiple positions, but the position of Prabhupada that has become mainstream within, within our movement is the idea that we were with Krishna and we fell from there. And when Prabhupada was asked about it, he said that, now, the very nature of free will means that it is free. We can't control it. Just because somebody is having something uh, enjoy, uh, having something good doesn't mean that they will not want to explore something else, which may actually be worse, but they may think it's better. So it is not that at that time it's dvesha. It's just the desire to enjoy differently. And then after that, when the soul comes to this material world, then the then the resentment or the envy towards those who are enjoying better than us comes up and it grows further. So there are various explanations, but uh, ultimately this question, if we go to the origins, it's like an intellectual banana peel. You know, banana peel with you step on it, you slip. So with respect to this question, dwelling too much on it will only cause us to slip in the sense that we will we will just get lose our clarity, we lose our conviction and we will end up in, in confusion, if not delusion. 
So best is that among these three answers, whichever answer we can relate with, we accept that and we move forward. As far as you know, where the dvesha has come from, we humans, we in various domains of life, we accept that we often move forward with working knowledge rather than conclusive knowledge. Say, for example, the COVID pandemic. We stopped the whole world practically because of the pandemic. But even now, how many of us know actually how the pandemic started? Was it was it intentionally created a variant? What is the accidentally leaked variant? Was it a natural mutation? Well, maybe in the future investigation will reveal. But are we going to stop our life till we find out what caused it? No, we have to move on with our life. So in every area of life, we humans often continue functioning with working knowledge. We can try to move towards a greater level of knowledge. But uh, it, working knowledge is what we were function with. Say now cancer, I was mentioning briefly. In many cases, the causes of cancer are not known. But still, if we know that something is ready to cure, something can cure us, then we, can, we take the cure and move forward. And we try to get the uh, to get to the causes also, but the nature of the human condition is that we often have to take huge decisions based on tiny knowledge, and that is just the way life is. You know, when we get married, how much do we really know about the other person? We can try to know as much as possible, but it's a huge decision, and the knowledge that we have of the other person is tiny. When we decide to say my, my immigrate from one country to another country, how much do we really know about that country? So we try to gain as much knowledge as we can, but the nature of human existence is that we have to take huge decisions based on a rel relatively insufficient quantity of knowledge, if not tiny knowledge. So we can't, when we do that in all other walks of our life, we can't demand that only with respect to spiritual knowledge, I will not commit to Krishna because I don't have the answer to this question. No, we have enough knowledge to make a positive difference in our life. We can find that if we try to develop our love for Krishna, the quality of our life becomes better. The quality of our consciousness better becomes better. So we focus on that. Okay. Thank you very much, Prabhuji. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hi Krishna Prabhuji, Dandavar Pranams, uh, as usual, a very uh, enlightening class, Prabhuji. Uh, Prabhuji, uh, you are saying the higher vision and the higher taste. So in that, uh, uh, to get the higher vision of Krishna consciousness, we should be with the higher taste of uh, hearing the Krishna Kata. Is it that, Prabhuji, you mentioned? Sorry, come again. Okay, last, last sentence, what did you say? No, no. The higher vision is uh, Krishna consciousness, right? And to get yeah. that uh, vision. Yeah, the, the higher vision is, you could say, the Krishna consciousness is a very broad word. What do you mean by yeah. Krishna consciousness? So Krishna consciousness can refer to yeah. higher taste also. Because when we are conscious of Krishna, we are attracted toward Krishna. Specifically, mm -hmm. what I meant by higher vision was the philosophical understanding of the path to higher taste. So, yes, mm -hmm. this, is, this is this material world and there is some pleasure, but there's a lot of trouble over here. In the spiritual world or on the spiritual path, there may be some austerity initially, but there is unlimited pleasure. So mm -hmm. that that higher vision is the vision of the path to the higher taste. So to put it another way, later on in the Bhagavad Gita 18th chapter, Krishna says that yet tad agre vishamiva parinami amrutopam, tad sukham satvikam proktam atma buddhi prasadajam. That which tastes like poison initially will taste like nectar eventually. That is the nature of mm -hmm. elevated pleasure. Pleasure in the mode of goodness and above. So this higher higher taste means to, you can say, go beyond the initial poison to the eventual nectar. But the higher mm -hmm. vision means to know, okay, right now I'm going through this poison, but there is nectar later. And to okay. stay in that understanding that there is the nectar, I will come to it. So we could say Krishna consciousness, because Krishna consciousness includes a lot of things and also include this. But specifically, I meant the we humans have the capacity to see with our intelligence and imagination things that may not be real right now. Mm -hmm. Somebody wants to construct a huge 
skyscraper where there's uh, just there's a dust dirt heap or dust heap that person has a they make an architectural plan they have a vision and is that vision that motivates them so for all of us through philosophy we through through philosophical study through philosophical uh, nourishment what do we do is we use our we get we use our intelligence and imagination to visualize the higher reality so right now no i don't have taste in the bhagavatam but if i keep hearing keep reading then one day i will get taste and maybe we know some devotee we just sit and read for hours bhagavatam yeah i want to get taste like that devotee just forget the external world and be absorbed so i will come to that so here specifically it is the in that is the philosophical philosophical nourishment that enables us our intelligence and imagination to visualize ourselves in a taste a state of higher taste ourselves relishing higher taste that's the higher vision okay thank you so much prabhu ji now i got it clear thank you hari krishna thank you hari krishna yes uh, sukhakar krishna das prabhu Uh, it was a wonderful class. Actually, <clears throat> we get the knowledge, Prabhu, and uh, we know that uh, we are not supposed to do that. And uh, the also we know, but thing in half of days, some people comes and we get descended, and our journey is not going further. What is the way to have a knowledge? What you told now, higher vision and going that way. and to continue that and we don't get down further yes so to if how do in spite of having that knowledge we seem to go keep succumbing to the lower taste or the lower taste doesn't go away there's mm. a question also in the chat box is similar mm. well maybe we need to stop uh, having that unrealistic expectation that the lower taste will go away soon it may take a long oh. time to go away and sometimes we have to we have to actually be careful about what we define our our selves by are we defining ourselves by our inability to restrain our senses well that is we, we need to be aware of our limitations our weaknesses but we don't have to define ourselves by those things because those are In the in Krishna in the Bhagavad Gita five twenty three says Shaknoti hai vaya sodu prak shari vimoksha kama krodho bhavam begam sa yukta sa sukhi na raha so he says that prak shari vimoksha that these urges they just come by being embodied and in that sense he says that they may keep coming till the moment of till we as long as we have the body and sometimes they may so strong that we may succumb to them sometimes we may not. but the point is that we don't have to define ourselves solely by our ability or inability to resist the bodily urges that come we need to yeah. define ourselves primarily by how well we are connecting with krishna that's why many times if devotees ask me how to be consistent i say yeah. that for many of us being consistent is too high a goal it is better to try to be resilient rather than consistent consistent means mm-hmm. always i'll stay at this level we get this particular level every day i'll wake up in the morning this time every day i'll do this 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 every day i'll read bhagavatam one hour okay that's nice to uh, aspire for but our life may be such that if you're going to sleep at 1 o'clock at night because of some unavoidable services or situations mm-hmm. then to expect that i'll wake up at 4 o'clock that may be expecting too much from our body so some days we may just not be able to read bhagavatam so instead of trying to mm. be consistent and beating ourselves up for not being consistent we can just mm. try to be resilient resilient means what that even if i come from this level to this level i will rise again i will not stay here hmm? so like resilient means we knock down but we rise up so we can try more to be resilient than consistent because consistency okay. can mean consistent can be sometimes too high an expectation and then the discouragement that comes from failing to be consistent that can demotivate us and then we may not even rise up so we may not we not like sometimes it happens that we decide i want to wake up at 4 o'clock 
and then the alarm rings and we are not even aware that we knock we close the alarm and then we wake up at maybe 5:30 or 6 and we are so angry with ourselves you know why did i wake up at 4 o'clock i'm such a lazy person but then the mind sneaks in and says anyway you overslept now let's just oversleep all the more now instead of we could have woken up at 4 o'clock but then we wake up we be sleeping till 8 o'clock so what has happened is yeah we got knocked down we couldn't wake at 6 but that doesn't mean i have to sleep till we, could, we couldn't wake at 4 but that doesn't mean if i wake up at 6 i have to beat myself up okay let me get up now and let me start you know i don't have to keep sleeping till late so sometimes like i said we get stimulation here i'm not using the word stimulation in negative sense but stimulation means a, a positive sense of positive sense of a positive sense of emotion we get stimulation yeah. when we are when we have a higher goal to pursue but we get that stimulation yeah. only when we feel that this is a doable thing this is a achievable thing mm. but if if we focus if our experience is oh i just can't do this i can't do this and then that stimulation goes away so it is our re- responsibility to we could say set goals for ourselves that are doable for us otherwise we set a, we expect something which we can't do and then the disc- the discouragement coming from that prevents us from doing what we can do also so we decide yeah. i want to fast nirjal on ekadash and then we we struggle till 12 o'clock or whatever and then we feel so we feel, uh, we feel so hungry we feel so tormented that they we eat and then instead of maybe taking some vegetable or something light if i can't fast nirjal then why fast at all and then we end up feasting three times a day <laughs> <laughs> so there's no so let's let's start with moderating our goals and moderating our goals means instead of trying to be consistent try to be resilient okay every day i may not be able to read one hour bhagavatam but maybe in a week i can manage to read say seven hours some days no reading some days i can read two three hours or whatever it is mm-hmm. so let's let's be seek resilience and i think we can move forward okay So all rather than rather just that because the body, all the problems had been that giant before. When you are the Maharaj, the disabled problem. Thank you very much, Dr. Dalal Thakur. Thank you. Happy to be of service, Ram. Thank you, Tiffany mm-hmm. Mataji, for your comment. Happy to be of. I don't think I'm introducing the concept. Yeah, maybe that concept is there in the Bhagavad Gita, uh, but I'm just articulating it that way. Thank you. Yes. You are too good, Prabhu. You are too good. Fantastic. Thank you. Thank you, Prabhu. Yes. So, and the uh, two questions will stop with this. After Anuradha Mataji. Hare Krishna, Prabhu. Ji, please accept my humble obeisances. Thank you so much, Prabhu. Ji, very, very beautiful. The last point that you were mentioning to Prabhu that we beat our, ourselves. I'm such, such a what do you say? Uh, pray to it always having high goal and then you know falling from there thank you so much prabhu i maybe you answered it in anita mata akush but i just can you do we have right that's what that we are what it's a thrive don't have this we even if like when you have exam not know how it feels to become you know number one but we intellectually understand that you know how will it feel is that what you were saying when you say we don't have higher taste yes we told about higher vision it told no he don't get intellectually okay. un- so when, when i said we yeah. don't have higher taste that means sometimes when you are practicing bhakti we may not really feel a sense of joy a sense of fulfillment so it may be like a duty i have to do some days when we wake up in the morning or we sit down to chant or we read bhagavatam some some days we may not really feel very enlivened by that and that is okay so those that what i mean we don't have that higher taste that means that we don't really feel satisfied stimulated enlivened uh, when we are just because we are doing a particular activity some days we may be some days we may not be so that's what i meant by not having higher taste some days we are 
you know, we are reading about this news and hearing about that, we feel agitated, and we hear, start hearing the Bhagavatam class. And the Bhagavatam class is so absorbing that we just forget everything else. But some days, the Bhagavatam class is going on, and we are feeling, I've heard the same point so many times. We're looking at our watch, we're looking at our phone, we are thinking of, so we are not really getting immersion in the Bhagavatam at that time. There's a lot of distraction which we are being tempted by. So that's an example of we not gaining higher taste. Yes, Thank you. Thank you. You know, but something else you said you are doing. Did I get? Hare Krishna, Mataji. Higher purpose with next. Then only the buddhi comes. Yes, I think the internet is breaking now. We, I'm not able to hear anything clearly. Maybe one last question, Jyoti Mataji. Yes, 